Yo guys, you're watching Shirko and today we are back with some more Wild Rift Esports and as you can see, we are going to be taking a look at Execration going up against Sunsparks in the Filipino Icon series. Now this game was actually requested by you guys because apparently there will be a Tristana pick in Esports for the first time I believe. Now let's get straight into the draft. It has already commenced and uh, Akali and Yasuo ban coming out of the site from Execration and here we have an Ari and a Kaisa ban in response coming out by Sunsparks. Now the Ari ban probably confuses you just as much as it confuses me, but it is most likely due to the mid laner of Execration just being an amazing Ari and their team playing really well around Ari. Um, that's the only thing I can think of here because Ari is definitely a decent pick, but nothing too insane to uh, warrant a ban. On the other hand, Kaisa and Akali are very insane and the Yasuo is probably also due to uh, Sunsparks having a very good Yasuo player. Lee Sin first pick coming out by Execration and it is responded with a Diana pick which is most likely going to go in the mid lane because we also have a Camille pick which is most likely going to go in the Baron lane. We have seen Camille jungle so this could be a Diana Baron lane Camille jungle. It could even be a Diana jungle, we'll see. Uh, meanwhile, Gragas picked by Supremo here and Zaya being hovered, but it is swapped to most likely a Braum. We'll see if the lock-in comes out. It does come out. Uh, Braum locked in, so this is 100% going to be the support. Jungle Lee Sin, so Gragas has to go either mid or Baron lane. And I'm saying that because, yes, Gragas can fill uh, the support in jungle position as well if he desires to. Meanwhile, we have the Corky pick, which is most likely going to go... Um, well, it can go Marksman or mid. You can see the Wild Rift meta right now is to pick a lot of champions that can fill multiple roles and then you can just swap them, you can flex them. That is historically in every MOBA what uh, usually the most uh, popular first picks or early picks are in a draft is champions that can be flexed. And again, Galio is also one of them. You can go support or mid lane. We could see a mid lane Galio or a mid lane Corki or none of them mid lane and the mid laner still has yet to be picked we have a darius pick coming out here by execration so that is gonna most likely go up against that camille uh the, the classic baron lane matchup and we finally have the tristana pick coming out by execration so it will be them pulling off the tristana let's see if she performs i'm not spoiled i have no clue i didn't even check if this game is exciting i just saw you guys uh, told me it's a banger and you guys told me uh, I should watch it because there's a Tristana pick. And as a last pick, we have a Graves jungle. Okay, that's sick. Okay, so Diana mid lane, Camille, Baron lane, Graves in the jungle, Gragas in the mid lane actually, and Tristana in that marksman position. And Corky is also in the marksman position, Galio support. Beautiful. That should be very sick. Let's just, let's just get straight into the game here. Um, let me move my camera as always. There we go, and we are recording. Okay, boom, let's get it. Move the cursor out of the way. And this should be very exciting to watch. Gragas versus Diana. Diana is very comfortable in that matchup. She just farms, Gragas the same. He just farms, he doesn't really have to be scared of anybody. That's the perks of having, uh, you know, that Gragas second ability it is very powerful, man. It gives you so much damage reduction that you don't really, you're never really scared of these assassins. So if you're, you know, if you're struggling in your solo queue games against any of the assassins, Gragas is always a good choice. He, he can he can fit in any team. So uh, definitely, if you go Baron lane, if you go mid lane, both are very strong. Now, uh, this Tristana is already getting bopped, which you definitely expect, because Tristana is terrible in the early game. Okay, It is what it is. Very, very terrible champion in the early game. Um, the attack speed is so low early game that you can't even proc your... Uh, satchel charge, not satchel charge, your um, explosive charge, I think it's called, uh, before it times out. You can't even do those four auto attacks before it times out, unless you use that rapid fire, that first ability of her to buff up her attack speed. But So yeah, basically level one, you can't even proc it. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, but of course, late game, she is an absolute monster. And especially with all those buffs, I think she got buffed like three times in a row. We Hey, I hope I will see her shine. I hope so. I hope um, Elson or Eason, I think it's Eason, is gonna, or Eisen, 
is going to show me a very nice build here that we can copy for my own solo queue games and maybe show you guys a gameplay of me playing it as well. Make sure to subscribe, ring the notification bell. I have to say that more often. It is what it is. You've got to sell out, you know, it is what it is. Um, got to always remind the boys because sometimes you guys forget. Just like I forget when I watch my favorite YouTubers and I realize after three months of watching somebody, oh, who I didn't subscribe yet. And it really does help out. It doesn't change anything for you, but uh, it helps out the YouTube algorithm. Anyway, we have that Graves going for a lane gank. What is a lane gank? It is when you sneak in through the lane into those side lane bushes, okay? That is a lane gank before the minion see you and look how well it works, man. I love lane ganks because you don't expect it. Darius has a ward, look. Blue side ward right there, bottom of your screen right now in that little bush. He doesn't expect to get ganked from the lane. It works so well in higher elos as well. It is a beautiful gank. I like to do it very often as well when I'm jungling. And it's so, such a clean gank, man. And it works so well even when your teammate is pushing hard, even when he's winning hard. Especially with a Camille, you just dive. You can't escape. She ults him. Boom. Easy clap. Now, let's check out this bot lane matchup. Uh, Tristana already falling a little bit behind. 100 gold behind. Again, just as expected. She's laning against a Corki. Super strong early game. And against Egalio, very strong as well as a support in the early game already. Deals a decent amount of damage with his poke. Is just very tanky. If you decide to engage him, you know, you might be thinking, okay, but the Braum is pretty cool. You know, he has a passive, he has that shield. You can really go for a little brawl. Well, you can't because the Egalio passive deals a ridiculous amount of damage. So especially in the early two levels, you're basically playing against a champion with three abilities when he's level two because the passive is just like an ability. It's a very, very potent and you can just go for a qu quick little trade and then disengage before your brawl passive even triggers, before you can even do those four order attacks. Now, of course, Tristana Braum is a very nice choice though because in the mid game, especially Tristana is going to shoot her auto attacks extremely quickly and proc that Braum passive super fast. So that's going to be good. But again, in the early game, they definitely want to play defensive. Now, this is an Infernal Dragon, which is a little bit unlucky for Execration. Because again, they would like to just scale. They would like to not fight at all in these early stages. Oh, that's a nice little taunt over the wall. The Gragas has to flash away. The Darius has to flash away as well. Because that Grave still has his ultimate up. One more auto attack and the ultimate and the Darius would be dead. So very nice... Um, very well played by Sunsparks here. It's a very cool name, by the way. If anyone, if any of you know the lore behind it, Sunsparks just rolls off the tongue. And um, Sunsparks is also engaging the team fight. The dragon is very low. They might want to just finish it real quick. The Galio ult gets cancelled, but the Graves secures the dragon while the Galio ends up dying. However, two people on the enemy team die as well. The Gragas and the Tristana, which is not something you want to see. But... The Graves ends up dropping in the end as well of that fight. Very well done. So in the end, it is a 2 for 2. However, uh, Sunsparks secures the Infernal Dragon, which they are very happy with. Now, this was played four days ago. Is this going to be the newest patch where Dragon is nerfed, the Infernal? I'm not quite sure. The YouTube video is four days ago, and I'm recording it right now. I'm going to release this video in like an hour when I'm done editing it and, uh, well, exporting it and uh, doing the thumbnail, you know? So um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Again, I keep saying I'm not sure if they play on the tournament realm or if they just play on the official servers. If they play on the official servers, the patch is already out. Already out for like six, seven days. Uh, yeah, pretty much a week. It's out for a week. Today is Wednesday. Quick maps. So maybe it is on the newest patch. Would be cool. So it's only 6% damage on the Infernal Dragon. Again, if you know any of these things, let me know. You know, maybe you're, uh, maybe you're behind the scenes. You have some insider knowledge of these icon series of how they work. I don't really have any riot contacts there. But yeah, we have Execration actually doing some cheeky little macro, uh, trying to push down that 
top lane tower. However, Sunsparks responds with a mid lane tower. And as I always say, the mid lane tier one tower is much more worth than a side lane tier one tower. But while I'm saying that, huge team fight breaks out, beautiful Galioton hits only one person, but that person gets taken out quickly. The Diana ult is pretty big there, hits like two people, fully charged. So that is an easy team fight victory for Sunsparks. However, they traded two for one, and maybe Nope, they don't get the third one. The Lee Sin is able to get away. Now, the thing is, their jungler is dead. Their jungler is dead. Are they still gonna get this uh, Skull Crab? Uh, not Skull Crab, it's the big crab here, the Rift Herald. And they do, they still do get it. Very nicely done. Of course, the enemy Lee Sin was also not in that fight. He, he was in the fight, but he was poked out, so he had to leave and not be able to respond. Oh my god, beautiful hold up! That is some sick little aggression, man. E-flash, body slam flash by the Gragas makes quick way of the Diana, and that also secures uh, Execration and mid lane tower. That is sick, guys. Thank you for recommending this to me. My boys, that is a very, very uh, exciting game so far. Again, if you have any more, hey, keep requesting. Just keep posting in the comments below. Keep upvoting the ones you know are actual bangers, you know. And I will review them. The ones with the most upvotes, I will for sure review them every single time. But yeah. Anyway, that is beautiful. Now, uh, the thing is, Tristana got that kill, okay, in the mid lane. She also pushed down the tower. She's getting a lot of gold. So it is getting dangerous. It is a 1000 gold lead for Execration. But Sun Sparks is still chilling because they have that beautiful Infernal Dragon, which is always going to give them more damage. Now this Corky gets engaged on, but a big Diana ult hits three people. The Galio ult follows up, only hits one. He's not able to finish off the Lee Sin. Flashes away perfectly, doesn't die to the explosive charge of Tristana. And we have some crazy clean mechanics. Only one person dying in that huge exchange. Now let's check out the item builds while I'm at it. Blade of the Rune King. Going on that Camille, that is very cool. I like that. I love Blade of the Rune King Camille. I stopped building it because no one else builds it. But my man Deviu, or De is it Deviu? I think it is. Um, hey, that is sick. I'm gonna try it again. He is giving me hope that it is still good. Um, the, the scoreboard is gone again. I will check out more builds, don't worry. I know I've been slacking in this game so far on checking out the builds. Usually I keep up with them a very Quickly, uh, let me know if you guys are even interested in me talking about the builds or if you just want me to narrate real caster style, you know, all the action. But yeah, the, the Graves is a little bit getting pressured here, but he is very safe. His team is following up and the Mountain Dragon is up and uh, I assume they will fight for it, but they first want to secure this bot lane tower and they instantly engage onto the Tristana. She's not able to jump away from the Camille ult. Beautiful Diana ult once again, hits three people once again, almost a full charge of that as well. That means big damage and that means four people dead instantly on the side of Execration. We have now a completely turned around gold lead because it was a 1000 gold lead for Execration. Now it is almost 5000. Uh, gold in favor of Sunsparks. Now let's check out what they will buy with that huge swing of gold. Um, they also get the Mountain Dragon and Camille is knocking down that bot lane tier 2 tower to half HP. Beautiful. She has that Blade of the Rune King. Yana going for a pretty standard build. Again, Rod of Ages into the Nasher's Tooth is very standard on Diana at this point. Um, if you guys check out my Diana video, I Skip the Rod of Ages. It's up to preference. You know, I like to be a little bit squishy, but deal more damage. They like to be a little bit more tanky in esports. If I were to play esports, I would definitely always go for the tankier option because it's just better to play safe in esports. We have a Graves with a Yomus into Black Cleaver into a Phantom Dancer. That is a very interesting, guys. We don't usually... Usually we see Yomus into, Black, uh, into Phantom Dancer. And then we see sometimes Black Cleaver, sometimes a Mortal Reminder, less after the nerf of Mortal Reminder. So very often a Duskblade, that is personally my favorite build. Sometimes even a Trinity Force, that's pretty sick too. Um, what I like to do nowadays, so I like to, my favorite build now is just an Infinity Edge as a third. I think it's sick. I'm going to make a video soon about that. But Black Cleaver second, lots of armor penetration. Very supportive build. 
uh, for his teammates. However, his teammates deal a lot of magic damage, so I wouldn't go for a Black Cleaver here. But again, the ability haste is also pretty good on Graves. More of an ability uh, build here than an auto attack build. Both styles work very well on Graves. I would say focusing on abilities is even better with that Dusk Blade, with that uh, Yomus, you know. Yomus first is pretty much a must. Um, I know I made that video about the Trinity Force build, but it was used in pro play. I tried it. It's cool, but again, I'm not sure if it's the best. Uh, we have Asterox completed this. Camille is big, and this Diana is big as well, man. She has that Rod of Ages, has that uh, Nasher's Tooth, and has that um, needlessly large rod as well. She's going for that double rod, man. I don't know if she's kind of freaky, but I am going a little bit off topic again, a little bit too nasty here. We are taking a look at another team fight. Beautiful Gragas Barrel. The, the Galio tries to dash away, but he gets cooked by the apprehend of Darius. Beautifully done, man. He got completely cocked. He got isolated. One shot. And now we have a 5v4. Execration is once again able to turn it around. By the way, this is game three of a best of three. Uh, one to one. It is so cool. The other two games were kind of stumps. Each team respectively stomping their way through their victory. Oh my god, what a big apprehend. But the Darius is low. He ends up dropping, but the Diana is caught out now. And this is again a very even team fight. The Tristana jumps away. Beautiful Zonias. Is it gonna help though? She flashes away. She is not in range. Gets killed in the end by an auto attack. The Galio comes in as well. This Gragas has to just escape. Didn't have Ignite to finish off that Camille, unfortunately. Is he gonna get taunted? He gets taunted up. What a team fight, man. This is fun to watch, guys. Let's go. Very nice. We have a Infinity Orb first. And this is the nerfed Infinity Orb. Because that nerf happened three weeks ago. Um, and the Lich Pain on Gragas. So still going super one-shot style, man. Very respectable. No soy milk in there, but not sure if it is the smartest option. Um, meanwhile, we have Lee Sin getting bopped, GA taken down, but he's able to flash away. And now this Tristana is again turning it around. She is just resetting that jump, has another jump reset, but goes too deep. Sometimes you pop off the adrenaline is pumping, you know? Brain power. Da, 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 da. And then. You go a little bit too deep, okay? You, you, you adopt the monkey playstyle a little bit too much. I, I, guys, we know it from me as well. You know it from yourself as well. Be honest, we all like to go a little bit too greedy. But while I'm saying that, the Brom gets smitten by the graves. Beautiful. Isn't it satisfying to finish someone with that smite? It is. And the Dancer almost completed. Uh, Rabalon's death cap, the Gucci hat. Almost completed. Hey, the dripped out Diana is gonna come in hot. If she keeps hitting those three man ults, it's gonna be three man one shots, okay? Right there, as soon as that Rabalons is completed. Everything else is very standard on those builds. Tristana also super standard build. Literally exactly what I go for, but it's not even a flex, it's just very, very standard. No, no brain dead build, you know, it's not, not really hard to figure out. A crit marksman goes for a Blade of the Rune King into crit. Makes a lot of sense. And yeah, now the dragon gets a little bit poked down, but not taken in the end. We are looking at a 15 minute game, 27 kills on the board. So sick, 6,000 gold lead for Sunsparks though. So in the end, they're still the winners so far. They're doing extremely well. They have those two dragons. So while Execration is keeping themselves in the game very well, uh, with some nice mechanical team fights. We still have Sunsparks in a huge lead right now. And the blue team steals the dragon with that Gragas barrel. Beautifully done. But their health bars are evaporating right now. Completely evaporating. Three people dead. That means for no return kills. So that means Sunsparks is... Are they going to try to get a base tower? I think they can get a base tower and a Baron. But we'll see. Ragas can defend pretty well. He doesn't have his ultimate available though. Ooh, they're going for the finish. They flash in. The, the, the um, Galio ult dunks down as well. I think it is game over. I didn't expect that. Wow, very nicely calculated uh, finish there. The minion survives with a sliver of health, man. They instantly pull the trigger. Extremely impressive gameplay there by Sunspark. 
I thought, play it safe, you know, get that base tower, get that Baron buff. But no, no, sir. They clown on me. They clown on me completely. Hey, where's my claw makeup? Where's my little red nose? Where's my Rudolph? I'm getting cocked here. And the Tristana, hey, she had some very nice pop offs. But in the end, she still gets destroyed. And the Grace is playing really well as well. That, that was just a great game, man. That was a banger. I think that was really, really exciting to check out. Uh, 18,000 damage by Tristana. I mean, in the end, the wallets win. Um, yeah, you can see the gold lead was always in control of Sunsparks here. Extremely well played. Let's see who gets the MVP uh, of the series. Is it going to be? Uh, probably not. I don't think they show that. Is it the best of three? Yes, it is the best of three. So yeah, that concludes this video. Let me, let me just see if there is going to be a best uh, MVP. But th th it doesn't really matter because we only saw... Player of the match. Okay, so Corky gets it. I mean, he did extremely well. He provided damage. Look at his kill participation. He was always there in the team fights, um, hitting his skill shots, you know. So, yeah, but I feel like the real star of this match. How many times did I say, ooh, huge Diana ult? Yeah, I think that was in the last team fights. She didn't shine too much anymore, but in those first team fights that got them ahead, she was just smurfing it up. With that being said, I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you guys think about this game. As always, make sure to subscribe, ring the notification bell, and leave an algorithmic comment, or even rather, leave a comment recommending me another uh, Wild Rift Esports match from any icon series all across the wor world. And with that being said, hope you enjoyed. Peace!